Are you stressed out about your weight and that you get on these plateaus and you don't know how to work them out? Do you feel like you have weight loss plateaus and you don't know how to overcome them? Well, I'm glad you're here. My name is Dara Thomason and I am the Quilters Coach and this is episode 172, When Your Weight Loss Plateaus. Okay, I have been a coach since informally for a while, um, but I accidentally became a weight loss coach. I think you've heard the story, but I will recap it because I haven't shared the story in a bit. And um, I think it's really important to have this top of mind, especially as you're listening to this podcast, because I know just like stinky shoes you don't want to be around them and I think a lot of times weight loss has kind of a stink to it you're like I don't want to talk about weight loss and in fact I have been there are people in this industry who don't really want to talk to me or um, have conversations because they're worried about being associated um, with weight loss because there is such a negative connotation to it but because it's been it's been spoiled in the past So this episode, I'm going to share about my story and and then I'm going to teach you how to manage um, around this when you feel like you have a a plateau. Now, this can be a weight loss plateau. It could be a business plateau with money or whatever. And I'm just using weight loss as an example, but it really does apply to all areas. But before I go into that, I want to share a win from one of the members in my membership. And this year I'm really focusing on how everyone else wins when um, the members start to really use these tools. So this is from one of my clients who, it was her birthday and she actually was at my retreat for her birthday and they had celebrated before, but, um, she had uh, the out of so she um her, she lost her husband last year and it, it was a really difficult loss it was very unexpected and she wanted to have some time with her daughter really just connecting and just like commemorating the loss of their of their dad of their husband and they did something really crazy they went to their favorite spa spent the whole day there and it involved both of them flying um so just flew in for the day went all day to the spa stayed a night and then flew out and she would never have done that before and one of the reasons i love this example is that she is i think she's 67 and she now believes that it is limitless all the possibilities in her life she's limitless she could just go on a plane go to a spa for a day and then come home she can do those things because she's no longer limiting herself and so now her daughter and her granddaughters um and everyone else around her can see oh you can be this age this is an embarrassing story for me to share this but when i was a young mom and, you know, I was educated. I went to university. I taught school for years and years. But there was something in my mind that said, when you're older, you have it all figured out. I don't know. I don't know why I thought that. I mean, I guess a lot of people think that. And I remember sitting in a church class and this woman was sharing. I think she was about, well, she was probably in her late 60s. And she shared an experience um, when she was in her fifties and she was like, I've never been so sad. I'd never had so many problems. I never felt so overwhelmed. And I remember thinking, I thought you had it all figured out when you got to a certain age. Yeah. It's so, it's such a misunderstanding. And so, um, I'm so glad for that awareness because that's not how it goes. But we are humans having a human experience, which means we have lots of good and lots of bad. And so this podcast episode is going to be really helpful for you as you look at how to navigate those struggles that you're having. Okay. So let's just, and I'm, if you're watching on YouTube, hello, it's nice to connect with you. If you're listening on my podcast, awesome. Don't forget you can download the worksheet. So 
as I'm recording on my YouTube, I have the worksheet beside me. And basically, this is a really great visual. So as a former school teacher and current quilting coach and instructor, I still do fun coaching classes. Um, we are all different learners. Some of us are auditory. Some of us are visual. Some of us are kinesthetic. And so I like that I have the worksheet beside me because it also is a cup as a acts as a guide for you and directs your brain as I'm sharing. So what do you consider a plateau? Now this is a really interesting question. Um I have some clients that I that in my membership where they've lost 80 pounds, they've lost, you know, 50 pounds, 30 pounds, and then they don't lose weight. But they still feel like they have 20, 30 pounds to go. Now they would consider that a plateau. It means that they have been on that same level for a long time and they haven't really gone up or down. Now, a lot of us have a negative connotation to plateaus and that's okay um, because, you know, we're used to listening to marketing saying that we need to buy and need to do things different so that we can be better. Like, that's okay. It's out there. So, I want you just to, in your own mind, decide what, how do I define a plateau? Now, if we were to look at the definition of plateau, just one random definition. Let me. Okay, so it's an area of relatively level high ground or a state of little or no change following a period of activity or process. Those are nouns. And then the verb for plateau is to reach a state of little or no change after a time of activity or process. So the industry's problems have plateaued. So there's actually a lot of... Um, of really good that we can take from this. And I like that the this came from a French word. Imagine that. It sounds very Frenchy, doesn't it? But pla means level. So it's just very level or or um stable. I like to think of stable. So when you think about plateau being a bad thing, what does that mean for you? It means that you're not enough, you're not doing enough, that you haven't reached a certain level. But when I think about a plateau, I'm always thinking about growth. I'm always thinking about how do we allow ourselves to grow into that next level. And so the fact that you have gotten to this next level and then you stay stable means that you are now in a really strong growth. So I have a 15 year old who did a math class last year and he had done really well in grade nine, and then he goes into grade 10, and um, he did not do well. He was not stable. And it was interesting for him because in his mind, he thought, oh, wait a minute, I'm good at math. And so he just thought, okay, it's going to come, it's going to come. But then when it wasn't, it started playing with his mind, thinking like, why, why am I not good at this? I thought I was good at this. And then he got discouraged because he wasn't putting in the effort. So you could say he plateaued in grade nine and didn't allow himself that level of growth for grade 10. So now he's repeating the grade 10 and he's able to like uh, bring a different mindset and look at what's really going on and then putting in the effort that's required. So there's lots of ways of thinking about plateaus. Um, I like the idea of stability. And knowing that, okay, this is stable now. I have, I, I struggled with this thing and now it's more stable. So with my clients who have lost 70 pounds and have maintained that weight for over a year. Yeah, sure. They could lose another 30 or 40 pounds, but the fact that they have stabilized that and that's their new normal, that's creating so much safety. It's creating so much muscle memory is creating so much um, like calmness. Like think about our, our nervous system, okay? So they've created a new level of amazingness. 
Now, the next question I have is, why do you want to lose the weight? What does that mean to lose the weight? Now, this, these whys are actually really important because if your motivation to lose weight is to be better, that's a lot of stress. If your motivation to lose weight is because it'd be more fun, that's a way different energy. And your approach that you're going to take is going to be a very different approach, okay? Um, so I would just be honest with yourself. Now, if you want to lose weight just because you want to look sexy in a, ba- a bikini, that's totally fine. But if you are wanting to lose weight to prove yourself or to make yourself better, you're going to run into some troubles because you have a lot of pressure that you're putting on yourself constantly. And it's so subconscious, you don't even realize it. And it's causing you a lot of, um, it's like bottling up so much pressure and stress um, that it's going to be really difficult to achieve that goal. Now, let's go to, I was just in Utah last week. I was speaking at Elizabeth Chapel's um, Business Entrepreneur um, Retreat, and it was amazing. It was so awesome. And we stayed in Sundance. In Sundance, there's a ski hill there. And we're up on the mountain. And I live on Vancouver Island. So I am literally at sea level because I live on an island. And um, so going up that high, and I went for walks every morning. And it was so crazy. Like, I was so winded. And I'm like a really healthy person. I can walk and walk and walk. And, but being at that different elevation and then going uphill was really strenuous on my body. And so it was interesting because, and, you know, we know that Olympic athletes will go to places like Calgary or Utah or uh, higher elevations because it actually um, takes more effort for our body when we're at these higher elevations. So then when they're, when they go to compete, they have like an added edge because their their lungs have more capacity and all of that. So think of, so when I ask this question, think about what happens when you go hiking and you get to a new height. Your body has to work high, harder and it's being pushed to a different level. And then you go to what's called a plateau. So you're hiking and you're hiking and then you stop at this, this new higher level and you can you have a whole different vantage point. So of course we have examples of people who hike um, Kilimanjaro or Mount Everest. They have base camps, so they have to get to a certain level, and then they actually have to stay at that base camp because their body, the elevation, all of that has to adjust. Because if they just plow through it, they can have so many so many more problems, right? With the you know, the air pressure, their lungs, their, uh, like, it just doesn't work. Like they have to give themselves time to acclimatize to that next level of elevation. And I heard this explained to me once and it made so much sense and it gave me so much clarity. But when we're on that new plateau, we go and we can see a whole different perspective. And so we have to get used to that new level. And when you are at a different plateau, there's different vegetation. There's different, like I talked about with our lungs, our, our lungs have to adjust to this new level of oxygen and availability of that. And so when you can be at that next level, there's all these things that you can acclimatize to, that you need to acclimatize to, because that's like the new you. And then the other part is you can actually have a totally different perspective when you're looking down at things and now you can see it in such a different way. You know, when um, people are raising their kids, a lot of times people will say, oh, the time goes so fast. And when you have little kids, the days sometimes go so slowly because you're like, how many times are we going to go to the park? How many times are we going to make like clean up messes? How many times, you know, how much more time do we have before nap time? especially if you're not going to be a mom that's using a lot of screens. And because they take, it takes a lot of effort and you're having a lot of like the same conversations over and over again. And 
I remember hearing these people say that and thinking, oh, I don't know. It seems like it's going pretty fast. And now that I'm on this other side where I have a 12 year old, a 15 year old, an 18 year old, that's um, actually at the time of this recording, he's leaving next week for two years. And I have a daughter who's gone. My son is in college. My daughter's in Tahiti. Like I have more adults than I have kids. Like part of me just feels so sad about that, but also I'm excited for them. And I'm, I'm, I am excited for that new adventure. But again, it's that plateau. It's like, okay, this is my new reality. I, I'm not the mom that has five kids at home anymore. I'm the mom that has a kid in college, two kids on missions. And then I have the, you know, a preteen and a teenager. But I will miss out on my life if I don't just allow myself to enjoy this new level. So it's the same thing with the weight loss plateau. It's like this client, I just keep bringing her for an example. She has lost 70 pounds and she has kept it off for a year. And if she can just be so grateful that she's a person that has lost 70 pounds with her feelings and her thinking, and now her body is getting accustomed to that, she is no longer going to put pressure on herself to lose weight. Her, she's signaling to her body, I'm so happy for us. This is so awesome. If you want to lose some more weight, great. If not, I've actually gotten got used to this. If we want to lose another 30, no problem. But we don't have to. It makes such a difference. So the question here is, how does it make sense that you are uncomfortable at that new level, physically, mentally, and emotionally? I think one of the biggest problems is we don't allow ourselves to acclimatize. So if I always got my joy out of being a mom with five kids at home, and now I have three adult kids, I'm not allowing myself to enjoy the fact that I have raised five kids and three have flown the nest and I'm so happy for them. And I just have to get to work at what kind of mom do I want to be to these adult kids? And when you think about the motivational triad, stay safe, seek pleasure and conserve energy, that's hard for me because my brain is like, well, you are really good at having five kids. You are really good at juggling. But I wasn't always good at that. I learned how to be. And so I can give myself permission to acclimatize to like, okay, I FaceTime my adult son who's playing basketball. I FaceTime him three times a week or, and then whatever, whatever that I want to make it. But I have to go to work to doing that. And it's the exact same thing with my clients. So now they're at this new level of, okay, so I've lost 30 pounds or 70 pounds. All right, this is who I am now. And they have to, when they look in the mirror, it's like, that's what I look like now. Same thing with wrinkles. People are like, oh yeah, I'm, I actually just turned 51. I'm like, okay, this is what happens when you're 51. You have more wrinkles. Awesome. Your teeth start changing a little bit, the color. Okay, that's how it goes. This like skin here and the neck changes a little bit. Okay, that's what 51 looks like. Here we go. All right, so this is what the tool I want to give to you for this episode. And I've actually been using this tool quite a bit uh, recently on the coaching calls. It's called Math Versus Drama. And one of the clients said, can you explain that more? I said, I have a podcast about it, but that was like way back. And so I thought I would just give you this tool. So let's do the math of weight loss. So this client of mine who has lost 70 pounds and kept it off for a year, when you look at the math of it, when you realize that you are now walking around 70 pounds lighter, so she has 70 pounds less on her hips, her knees, her feet, her joints, her like arteries, all of that. So that is the math. And she could possibly have 30 more pounds to go. So, but she's, she's thinking, okay, I have for one whole year, I have maintained a 70 pound weight loss. And so now if I want to continue to change, what does that require of me? So she could break down, how did she lose that 70 pounds over that year? Sorry, how did she lose the pounds before? And then how has she maintained? So she could do some math of, you know, what are the typical things that I eat? How am I doing with my calories? 
Am I having like too much fat in my day? Am I eating like, so if I'm eating this many calories and I'm, and I'm not a big advocate, like I don't track, I don't do that kind of thing, but every once in a while I will. Every once in a while I'll say, okay, so what have I actually been eating for the last two weeks? Let me get curious. Let me figure out what it is because we do need to go to our storage. So, but so, but if we're eating, even if we're eating like the exact amount of calories that we're always going to need every day, we're never going to be able to dive into the, the stored fat. Okay. Um, now the drama could be, oh, what's wrong with me? I've, yeah, sure. I've lost 70 pounds, but I haven't done anything in a year. What kind of energy is that? What kind of, what kind of, um, uh, message are you sending to yourself? Right. That's, that's where we're, we're going to get to. So if we are indulging in drama, we are creating a lot of emotions that are not going to help us. Now, one of the, the, the last thing I'm going to say, I am a weight loss coach who helps you lose weight when you learn how to feel your feelings. We don't have a knowledge problem. We know what to eat and what not to eat for the most part. What we struggle with is an under feeling problem. We don't know how to feel our feelings. We don't know how to work through. She said this and they did this and they looked at me this way. And then they said this to me. We don't know how to deal with those kinds of things. And that's why I'm this non-traditional, non-conforming you know, weight loss coach, because I help you get to the root of the problem and I help you feel all the feels. So I am inviting you to start now in this journey. It is the beginning of November. If you're listening to this the day it comes out, we have however many weeks till Christmas. This is the beginning of the holiday season. I guess technically it started last week with Thanksgiving. I was sorry, with um, Halloween. So if you want that beautifully finished quilt or that clean house or that beautiful harvest of the garden, you have to start. So it's not just this instantaneous. So we do sometimes have to sit on the plateau and that's totally healthy and good. All right. So I want to invite you inside my membership. It is when you join the membership, you actually, it's like I give you a mirror that you can see finally for the first time your thoughts and your your subconscious thoughts. You can see how many times you sabotage yourself. You have the most awareness, but it's you also get this very safe place where you have a coach and you have a community to help you. I cannot emphasize it enough. You are your best investment. And if you are not investing in yourself, you are just going to stay spinning and spinning in the same place. So my invitation is come to a breakout call with me. And then we can make a decision, yes or no. You're a good fit or not. But just give yourself that gift of the breakout break session, breakout call with me, breakthrough call with me. This is urgent. Yes, the doors are open to my membership all the time, but you taking care of you is urgent. Because if you don't do something different, you're always, you know, the definition of insanity, you're always going to get the same results. And the results you're having in your life right now, you're not having the quality of life that you want. And I want to be there to help you with that. And I am excellent at it. So why wouldn't you? All right. I cannot wait to meet with you on the break out, breakthrough call and help you to really enjoy the life that you have. All right. I can't wait to talk to you then. Bye. Also, for the month of November and December, I have some amazing trainings. I want you to check out the link below and see how many incredible trainings there are. I am just going to be coming to you every week and sharing with you how to really live a life that you really want to live. And then at the beginning of December, we're going to have an amazing masterclass that's going to set you up for so much December success. All right, I'll see you then.
if you aren't loving your current life and hear yourself saying things like, I should be happier, I should be getting more done, or question how productive and fulfilled you are, this podcast is for you. I'm Dara Thomason, professional quilter turned life coach for quilters, where I show you how to overcome obstacles like perfectionism, people pleasing, overeating, overcomplicating life, so that you can really start to enjoy your life by learning and using tools for your brain to help you transform your everyday living. Are you ready to make these changes? I'm ready to help. Let's start your transformation one UFO at a time.